Dinosaurs have always been portrayed as the dominant animal group in the Mesozoic. However, this was not the case for most of the first time period. In fact, it took most of the Triassic period for a new group to rise, the new pheropods. This was the first time pheropod dinosaurs made multiple moves to skyrocket up in the food chain and try to take over apex predator niches. And they almost made it, with some of the new pheropods taking on sizes that before were unimaginable. This is the story of one of the first bigger new pheropods. At first he may not have been the apex predator, but then took over this exact niche. Today's dinosaur is Supaisaurus, one of the biggest Triassic pheropods out there, and one of the biggest pheropods in the list of, you guessed it, big Triassic pheropods, joining the ranks of the Herrerasaurid Herrerasaurus and the Coelophysoids Gojirasaurus, Lillian Sternus, and Lophus Trophius. Supaisaurus could also be a Coelophysoid neopheropod, or even a Dilophosaurid neopheropod. For this video, we're gonna go with the widely renowned consensus that Supaisaurus is a basal neopheropod. Back to Supaisaurus. Supaisaurus, meaning devil lizard, is a genus of pheropod dinosaur that lived during the late Triassic period, specifically from the Norian to the Rhaetian stages, about 221 to 206 million years ago. It was discovered in northwestern Argentina in the Los Colorados formation. Named by Andrea Cucci and Rodolfo Correa in 2003, the name Supaisaurus is derived from Supai, a Quakua word for devil, hence the translation devil lizard. The name reflects local indigenous mythological influences and alludes to the predatory nature and fearsome appearance of this dinosaur. Supaisaurus rogeri is the type species with the species name rogeri originating from Guillermo Rogier, who was part of the excavation crew. Supaisaurus was a medium-sized carnivorous dinosaur reaching about 4.5 to 6 meters or 15 to 20 feet in length. Its weight is estimated to have been around 250 kilograms of 550 pounds. This bipedal pheropod had a slender build with a long tail and relatively light bones, suggesting it was a swift and agile predator. Its skull was elongated, already housing a series of fenestrae or skull openings that reduced its weight. The snout of Supaisaurus featured small sharp teeth suited for a diet of meat, most certainly smaller reptiles, early mammals and smaller or baby dinosaurs of the Los Colorados formation. Supaisaurus is often reconstructed with a pair of crests rising from the top of its skull, the same portrayal as the more famous Dilophosaurus. However, it might be the case that these crests were actually formed when the skull was crushed during fossilization, the resulting pressures pushing the lacrimal bone of the skull upwards, making them transform into crest similar structures in the fossils. Supaisaurus is known from Paleodox and TV series, including when dinosaurs ruled with Jeff Goldblum, I love that series and apparently Dinosaur Train. Wait a second, Supaisaurus was officially named in 2003, but when dinosaurs ruled was released in 1999. Nah brother, roll the clip. And now you want to pull a... what do you call it? Time heist? Yeah, time heist, of course. Just a joke, it was actually discovered in 1997, but only described in 2003. Meaning Jeff Goldblum and the crew of When Dinosaurs Ruled just had good info. By the way, Supaisaurus is also pretty much the only other Patagonian pheropod dinosaur alongside Herrerasaurus that could be considered a Triassic Giganotosaurus, but Supaisaurus is a Neopheropod. But what does Supaisaurus being a Neopheropod have to do with it being the Triassic Giganotosaurus? Evolutionary relationships. The Neopheropods are a group within Pheropoda, including all basal Neopheropods and groups that came with them or after them. For example, Coelophysids, Ceratosaurians and the Tetanurae, which include Megalo slash Spinosauroids, Solurosaurians and lastly Canosauria, to which Giganotosaurus belongs. Meaning Supaisaurus is actually more closely related to Giganotosaurus than Herrerasaurus. So how does Supaisaurus do in the Giganotosaurus checklist? Biggest pheropod of its time and region? Check. Has to be a part of the new pheropoda clade, such as the later Allosaurus and Cacrodontosaurus? Check. Relatively long and slender skull with skull finestrae? Check. 
Sharp razor rest teeth, check. Useful hands ending in sharp claws, check. Lift in Patagonia, check. Even with all the traits just mentioned, it was of course not a mega pharopod, which is a pharopod with 5 metric tons or more in weight, and also not an apex predator, but it doesn't have to be to do great in its environment, as speed and or stealth combined with some size, aka the Utah Raptor niche, is always a position a dinosaur can occupy in an ecosystem. And you might be thinking that's weird, with 250 kilograms of 550 pounds, which is more than thrice the size of an average fit man today by the way, it was still not the apex predator of its time and region. That is indeed correct, as this is still the Triassic period, a time ruled by giant ambush predatory reptiles even older than basal crocodilomorphs. In other words, Supersaurus had to be careful and watch its step, especially in forested areas. This wild environment is now the Los Colorados formation of what was once Triassic Patagonia. And for a fact, the Los Colorados formation just happened to be the hotspot for the biggest Loricata and Pseudosuchian of all. But let's first look at the rest of the paleofauna, then get back to this topic. Supaisaurus paleo environment, the Los Colorados formation, does include unidentified anapsids, some synapsids, including the Probinognathian cynodont. Tesselatia, the Stalacarine Dicenodontian Chacalaria, another synapsid called Caliminia, three crocodilomorphs, including the Protosuchus coloradisuchus, Hemiprotosuchus, and the basal crocodilomorph Pseudhesperosuchus. Dinosaurs include the Sauropodomorphs, Lessomsaurus, Riachasaurus, Coloradisaurus, and another indeterminate member, as well as the Xylophysoid Neopharopod Paul Venator and the basal Neopharopod Supaisaurus. There are also some Archosauromorphs, including the Aetosaur, Neatosauroides, the Onifosuchid Riochasuchus, and the biggest ever land carnivore that is not a dinosaur, the giant Loricatan Fasolosuchus. And that changes everything, as a 10 meter or 33 feet Fasolosuchus is probably comparable to a big Allosaurus in weight, around 3 metric tons, making it of course the biggest land predator of the Triassic, over 10 times bigger than even Supaisaurus. Fasolosuchus has been speculated to prey on sauropodomorphs such as Lessomsaurus, while Supaisaurus lived in the shadow, hunting smaller animals and probably scavenged on Fasolosuchus' food. At least it was fast enough to run off in case if a Solosuchus came back to the carcass. This reminds me of the Sorosuchus Eoraptor dynamic in Dinosaur Evolution, but Supaisaurus had one more trick up its sleeve, and that is longevity. Supaisaurus outlived the Solosuchus by 7 million years. This would have most certainly allowed it to grow to its maximum size, which is 250 kilograms of 550 pounds, as Gregory S. Paul suggests. Maybe, just maybe, somewhere out there, in the depths of the late Triassic, there is an even bigger Supaisaurus. And if someone ever says we haven't got a cool dinosaur with the letter Z, you tell them we got the demon lizard Supaisaurus, and it would be happy to hunt you down in your dreams. That's it for this video, smash the thumbs up, the bell and the subscribe, as only legends do that and I know you all are. For more Mega Raptor, there is also the German channel. Also check out Instagram for fitness motivation and inspiration, as I'm on a mission to help more people get fit. Furthermore, you can also check out Twitter to hear my thoughts on all kinds of dinosaur stuff. And with that, I wish you a splendid day or evening. Goodbye.